Right down. In this video, we're going to determine a n. It's a part of the. It's like one of the blocks, really, another block, because our original function was neither even nor odd. We have to get a zero, a n, and b n. We've got a zero in the previous video, and now we're going to look for a n. So this is a formula from the back of the exam paper, and uh, there's two versions, and this is the one to use. I'm thinking, right? We know that the period, uh, from part a was 2 pi we we're told this so we can sub in 2 pi here and we get uh, 2 there over 2 pi and our limits become 2 pi over 2 minus 2 pi over 2 we keep our f of t here and we have cosine 2 n pi small t and big t becomes 2 pi dt and now we can cancel like we did previously and we get 1 over pi here, our limits become positive pi, negative pi, keep f of t here for a minute, and then we have cosine, the 2 cancels with the 2, and the pi cancels with the pi, and we're left with cos nt dt. Right, now looking at the graph like we did previously, you see the area on the graph between minus pi and zero is zero and because integration gets us the area on our graph we can reset this guy here it suits us right so we can have one over pi pi and the lower limit zero and sub in our function now t cosine n t dt and here's where we take a wee turn we're going to be looking at uh, page 26 in the log tables right we see this type of structure here we're going to be doing a, um, a little operation called uh, integration by parts right so in the log table we're told that the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du so we compare this to what we have up here look and we're going to let we're going to let let uh, u equal t so the u dt then we differentiate u with respect to t and we get 1 so multiplying both sides by t, dt we get the u equals dt and then this dv bit is the rest here do you see this so dv equals cos nt dt but we don't want dv, we want v, and we, we have to integrate this to get v. Okay, and when we integrate that, uh, looking at page 26, our rules for integration, cosine integrates the positive sine, so we get sine nt times the first, oh, multiplied by 1 over the, the first derivative of what's in the brackets. So if you differentiate that with respect to t, we get n right so that gives us our little result here v equals sine n p over n and now we're going to rewrite this guy here a n equals all this we're going to rewrite that now so a n equals we still have our one over pi and big curly bracket now and now we're going to put in u and v, right? Well, u, we've let u equal t, so we can put in t, and v equals this here. So we have sine nt over n. And we can put that in its own bracket, and we we'll still keep the limits. And then we're going to be subtracting v du. The integral of v du, the limits are pi and zero. v is sine nt over t and du well uh, instead of du we can put in dt now we need to use some careful integration skills so i'll just try and go down to this um, as clearly as possible so we have one over pi and integrating this or, or applying the limits here sorry applying the limits in here we get 
uh, see we're, sub we're subbing in pi for t so we get pi times sine n pi over n minus now t then is going to be zero so you're going to have zero times uh, this structure here which means it's going to end up being zero anyway n times zero here uh, over n and what will we do now yeah so I'm going to integrate this second bit here now and we the n we're integrating with respect to t so n is like a constant so we can pull out the one over n before starting our integration so sine integrates to negative cosine so we get minus the cosine of n t and because it's a little bit complicated in the bracket it's not just a variable we uh, multiply by one over the contents of the bracket or the first derivative of the brackets so that's going to be one over n and we maintain our limits they have to be applied now tidying up a bit sine n pi this just goes this just goes to zero right because sine why because sine starts at, or n starts at one so sine of pi sine of pi is zero sine of two pi is zero etc sine of three pi is zero you can run that into the calculator set it in rads and you'll see that that's true and you could also be familiar with the sine uh, graph like this right period two pi that's two pi and that's pi there and that's zero pi here and you see it's just going to keep going so at uh, one pi it's zero at two pi it's zero and by the time it comes back down here at three pi it's going to be zero as well so this is always zero so we just end up with zero minus zero here nicely enough and then over here we can start tidying up the one over n is not we are we've integrated with respect to t so the n is treated like a constant here this one minus one over n can slide outside and we get plus one over n squared uh, cosine n t with these limits to be applied now we're tidying up further um, just have to keep calm and go one step at a time so we have one over pi that's all gone to zero and uh see this n squared that can come out here as well so we have one over uh pi n squared and uh then we have our square bracket and we're going to have something minus something in here so this is going to be cos n pi minus cos uh, the n is going to be multiplied by the zero so we're going to have cos of zero in here okay so cos of zero cos of zero you should know or look it up but if you look it up in the calculator but cos zero cos starts here at one you know so cos of zero is going to be one so that's going to be uh, one over pi n squared cos n pi minus one now this cos n pi bit is a bit tricky now n starts at one right n goes from one to infinity so say when n is one we have cos pi what's that equal to when n is 2 we have cos 2 pi and when n is 3 we have cos 3 pi cos 3 pi right cos pi is equal to 1 cos 2 pi um, is gonna be where's it gonna be well cos pi uh, I'm gonna be confused here now cos pi actually this is uh, uh, pi over 2 cos pi is here right so cos pi is minus 1 and we can verify that with the calculator um, we can put the calculator into rads and you can go cos shift pi 
right it's minus one and if we go up there and we go two pi we get plus one and we go up here and we change that to uh three we get minus one right so it's minus one plus one so you can see the pattern immersion and cause four pi is going to be plus one so this guy here oscillates or changes between minus one and plus one so it's going to be minus one minus one there when n uh when n is what when n is odd right when n is odd so this bracket in here this whole square bracket is going to evaluate to minus two when n is odd but when n is even uh like two pi there and four pi you're going to have a plus one so you're going to have a, a plus one when n is even you'll have a plus one in there one minus one will be zero so it'll evaluate to zero when n is even right so that gives us a kind of a a little awkward result we're going to have one over pi n squared or you could write it as one over n squared pi that doesn't matter really and it's going this is going to be multiplied by minus two when n is odd and when n is even we're going to get zero because it's going to be multiplied by zero the whole thing will become zero when n is even and this is our this here is what our result for an which we'll be using in a later video to construct the final series